Folks, welcome back. It's been a while since we looked at a graphics card, but the other day, Imperator Nick, who I'm choosing to assume is actually named Nick in real life, left this comment on one of my videos. Uh, link here to that. And uh, he's having some trouble with his 980 Ti, and he asked some questions about how to diagnose it that I felt maybe deserved a video response versus just trying to explain it to him in a comment. So let's, let's talk about this. Nick's first question is, why can't he use the short detection mode in his multimeter to try to find a short to ground on his car? And the answer is, the short detection mode in a typical multimeter is not sensitive enough to tell the difference between a large integrated circuit, like we find on a graphics card, either the GPU or the memory chips or so, and so forth, and an actual short. And I can demonstrate that here using this reference 980 Ti, which is basically identical to Nick's card. So, if we take our probes, and we put one on ground, and we put the other on the output of the, uh, v the GPU VRM, what we find is that the meter detects a short. But what it's actually seeing is about two ohms of resistance. Now, that 2 ohms of resistance is actually the proper resistance for a 980 Ti. And I know, because I've been able to test it, that this GPU is healthy. So, while that would tell us that we have a short, what we actually have is a healthy GPU, and the meter just isn't calibrated right to tell us that. What, these, what the short detection mode is typically used for is finding shorts to ground in, like, a car's wiring harness or something. It's not really intended for sensitive PCB work like this. So Nick's, ne Nick's next question is, can he use the short detection mode to find components that are shorted to ground elsewhere on the board and then just replace those components? And the answer to that is also no. For the reason that there are actually a lot of components that are supposed to be shorted to ground. So if we put one of our probes on ground and we probe around the card, we'll actually find a lot of places where that appears to be the case, that are not in fact shorted. So both sides of this capacitor, for instance, provide I guess, with a short. And what that is is actually a capacitor between ground and the memory power that just doesn't have that many ohms of resistance between it. So for instance, if we probe here at the output of our memory power, that's uh, memory power is this section. We've also got about 13 ohms. On this meter, the threshold it uses to detect a short is about 30 ohms, which is way too high to detect shorts on a graphics card like this where 2 ohms is actually not a short. With that out of the way, let's talk about what Nick's real question is, and that's how can he figure out what's wrong with his card? And the answer to that is you need some prior knowledge. One of the things that you need to know is what should the resistance to ground on each of the power rails on the card be? And what uh, do, resistance do you actually have? And in order to figure that out, we need to go back to regular ohms mode and not short detection. So we'll hit our select button there. And now we're in regular ohms mode. And the way we figure out what resistance we have is to take measurements on each rail. So if we take a measurement on our GPU power, our rail, what we'll find is that we've got about 2 ohms. We know from testing a working 980 Ti that when the card is shut off, the static resistance through the GPU should be about 2 ohms. So that tells us not necessarily that our GPU is healthy, although this one is, but that we don't have a short to ground on that rail. If we did, we'd have 0. But because we have 2 ohms, we can strongly suspect that that rail is OK. Next, we can try the same thing on our memory power, which also, if the card doesn't have the memory power rail, it's not going to run. So in that case, that's this section here. And if we stick our probe in there, we get 13 ohms, which is right in the range of normal for one of these cards. Typically, memory uh, power rails have either about 50 ohms or in the tens. And the difference is, what brand of memory chips are they using? These Samsung ones have much lower resistance than the uh, Hynix and Micron ones that you find on other cards. But on these 980 Ti's, the spec memory is Samsung 
And that's what you see, 13 ohms or so. So on this card at least, what we've determined is that we don't have a short to ground on our VRM or uh, our GPU VRM or our memory VRM. So where else could we have a short? Well, we could have a short through our 12 volt power rails, which was the case in the video that Nick was com uh, commenting on. And one of the reasons that I didn't really do a whole lot of other diagnostics, because I knew going in that that was the problem. And I really just took some measurements to demonstrate that. But the way you would check is you actually measure the pins on the PCI finger and your 12 volt inputs for their resistance to ground. And if you've got less than thousands on any of them, that's a short. So for instance, where is it? It's right here. So these first three pins on the PCIe finger are the 12 volt power. And as we can see on the meter, we've got thousands and we're charging up a capacitor there so the, the resistance appears to be dropping. But what that tells us is that we don't have a short. So we can try these other ones over here. And it's tricky because on this particular connector, it's the far pins. But as we can see there, we've got much higher resistance than zero. So that's not a short. And we'll try this guy over here. Same thing. We've got millions in this case. And so that means that that looks OK. Well, what else could we have? Well, frequently, what you'll find is that you've got some of these 8-pin SOP8 packages on the card. Now, I can't tell you exactly what ICs you're going to have, because every card is different. But on, on these, typically what you'll have is you'll have a little dot, like this one has right here, that indicates pin 1. And often, pin 8 is the output. So if we test on this, what we've got is thousands there as well. So that rail is not shorted. And we've got another one here. So we'll test this one. And that rail is not shorted either. So those look healthy. Now, once you've tested all of the power rails that you can find, oh, we've got one, one more over here. As a rule of thumb, when you have one of these little inductor components, these things are called inductors or chokes. Whenever you have one of those, typically you've got a VRM or a voltage input to the card. So if we test the resistance to ground at each one of those, that's a spot we might want to check for a short. OK. That's probably the 3.3 3 .3 volt input. 300 ohms on the 3.3 .3 volt rail is pretty common. So when you see that, you know that rail is probably healthy. So we've got one more over here that we'll test. And this one is probably power for our gate drive on our VRM power stages. So there we've got thousands as well. So that rail is probably healthy. And you may have been able to guess by the fact that we're missing some components here that the problem with this particular card is actually that this power stage failed. So we're in the process of replacing that on this card. Anyway. Now that we've determined that we don't have a short to ground on any of our power rails by actually measuring the resistance to make sure that it's not zero, our next step is plug the card in and test for the proper voltage on each of those power rails while the card is running. If you have the proper voltage at each one, and unfortunately the only way to truly know what the proper voltage for each one of those is, is to compare it to a healthy card. So you're going to need to find somebody who has one who will let you compare it, or if you happen to be fortunate to be running an SLI setup and you've got one dead card, take the other one out and compare to that one. I've inserted some B-roll here of checking the voltage on each of the rails, so I don't need to set this up again. But my point is that you need to figure out what the proper values are for each of the measurements you take, whether that's a resistance or a voltage measurement and compare what you have on your card to what proper is. And once you find one that's not proper, that's how you know which circuit you need to troubleshoot. Uh, doing that really goes beyond the scope of what I wanted to talk about today. But that's the basic process. Take your resistance measurements first and figure out if any of them are actually shorted to ground. And assuming they're not, plug the card in and take some voltage measurements and find any that are either way out of whack or zero and, tr and troubleshoot those circuits. That's basically all there is to it. Once you've figured out which circuit it is that's malfunctioning, 
figuring out why is usually not that difficult. Um, the last thing that Nick asked about is voltage injection and why is that necessary? And basically that's necessary if you can't figure out why you have a short to ground on a particular circuit. Uh, it's something that I would consider a last resort. If, if you have a short to ground, you should really try to figure out where it is using other means first, and if you can't, then, then you inject voltage to try to find which component gets hot. Unfortunately, that can be destructive, so if you think that you have a good chance at repairing the card, don't do it unless you can't find it any other way. Anyway, I hope that this has helped to clarify some of the, the things I've talked about in past videos. And if Nick would like to respond in the comments with some of the measurements he takes on his card, I'll be happy to try to talk him through figuring out what's wrong with it. Anyway, I hope this helped you out, and I'll see you in the next one.